Hey everyone, welcome, welcome. This is Vic from Vic's Basement Brewcast, uh, brought to you by South Jersey Beer Scene on our South Jersey Beer Scene YouTube channel and a brewery strong. And uh, well, I'm here. I'm not that lonely because I got uh, I got four new friends, good friends here with me. But my buddy Richard is not here. He's going to be relocating, so it's going to be once in a while. Maybe we'll see Richard on here, but. Uh, We'll have to survive without him, right, Johnny? Yeah. Yeah. And of course, uh, being directed, produced, and filmed by the immortal Johnny Cashew. Does anyone else call you immortal, Johnny? No. Only me. Only him. Oh, good. See, that's why. That's why I call you my favorite Cashew. <laughs> see that? Uh, so we are here for the first time ever at Brotherton Brewing Company, and we've been talking a lot about sports here. You, you know, you can see Ryan and Dan got the Phillies hats on. So um, this is November 1st, the World Series Game 3 is tonight, so we want to try to get these guys done by, by whenever so they can watch the game, uh, which was the rain out from, from last night. So this is November 1st, so the outcome will probably be decided by the time this actually comes out. So for the first and only time that any of you may ever hear me say this, go Phils! <laughs> <laughs> That is probably the first and only time you'll ever hear me say that. But as I say, and since this is, we talked a little bit about sports, I'm going to say first time, long time here at Brotherton Brewing Company. First time uh, on the video. Been a fan of the beers, though, for a long time. So uh, I'm going to let you all introduce yourself. We have the um, part of the team here. So we'll start with the head brewer on this end. My name's Ryan Michaels. I'm the head brewer. Joe? Joe Cowley. I'm one of the other brewers. I'm Keith Oriente, I'm one of the owners. Dan Oriente, one of the owners. And you all know who I am. Well, hopefully you do if you watch this enough. So here we are, Brotherton Brewing Company uh, in Echo, founded 2015. You know, we talked a little bit about this before. So tell us, Keith and Dan, tell us about the, the origin uh, of Brotherton Brewing Company. Where did it start? So um, five lifelong friends um th th two of those those five were um were involved in uh, were and are involved in a uh, a winery bounds a winery and uh just kind of a, a vision of the five of us as far as you know what can we do in the future together in this you know in this industry and uh, we, we decided in 2015 that we would um, venture into a craft brewery. Um, we opened up shop in a, a small um, production facility that was actually uh, designated with, uh, for the Valenzana Winery at that time. And, um, you know, we hired a distributor and we, we brought in some equipment, hired a professional brewer, and we, uh, we gave it a shot. And, um, you know, I think at that time, what our plan was, much different than most other breweries, was let's, let's, let's start on the production side first and see if uh, we can make a name for ourselves before we invest into a, um, a tasting room, uh, uh, you know, a retail outlet. Um, Within the first year, we realized that it was it was a it was it was it was going well, and we made a name for ourselves, and we bought some property in, in the in the local area in Shemung, and some things just didn't work out with uh, with building our our flagship facility there. So, um, you know, with the Brotherton name was originated from that that local land area, the Brotherton uh, Indian Reservation. Was uh, was who first settled? Um, they were the colony's first Indian reservation to settle in the area, and they settled on that area of land that we have there. So we we figured Brotherton was a great name for that. Mm -hmm. And that's interesting because I thought it was Brotherton because Kinda you two are brothers, ball, right? you know. Yeah, so it is a little bit of both there. Yeah, two sets of brothers. In uh, the, that's uh, great. The <clears throat> yeah. So, um, you know, we, we settled on that name. Um, it, it made a, a good story. 
Um, and then, you know, a few years went by and we still weren't able to, uh, for, for various reasons, weren't able to build on that land in Shemung. And we, uh, we found this, this awesome spot here in, in Akko, New Jersey, which was an old firehouse. And we just gutted it and, and made it our own. And this is actually a fantastic location, you know, and so you'll probably see some video here of, uh, you know, what it actually looks like all around, but it really is a fantastic location. Now, let me go back and, and talk about the origin of starting, you know, starting the pro process, and, and you are right, you know, I've talked to a lot of brewers, that's really different that you really started out with a distribution plan right off the bat without even thinking of a tap room. Did that, was that any different? Because we know that sometimes the state of New Jersey can be difficult. Mm, to say the least. Yes. So how did that process go when you were trying to start a distribution and the fact that it was on winery land? You know, the process went very, surprisingly very smooth the way we started. Um, it was on winery land and that was actually a plus for us because Valenzano Winery, when they started at that particular spot that we, we started, um, they were distribution only as well. So it was considered a, a, already a production facility or a production um, property. So we kind of just moved right in. Um, our outlook was, let's make sure that we can make a product that is well perceived by the general public before we invest a lot of money into a, a tasting room where, you know, we're not real sure. I mean, you know, is everybody going to like our beer or are we going to, are we going to take off on the shelves? Um, and with that being said, Hunterdon and Brewing Company, who is our distributor, they came along and they felt very, very confident in the product that we were producing, and they took us on, you know, as a as a startup business, and they took a chance on us as as we took a chance on them, and it worked. Excellent, excellent. Now, as far as the brewing <coughs> process and deciding which beers to do, right at the origin, you know, mm -hmm. right the genesis of the company. Now, Ryan, I know you were on board right from the beginning mm -hmm. with them as far as the the brewing process. Uh, Dan and Keith, are you guys also? in the brew also both of you so we we have we have some say in what's being brewed um obviously we are try to stay on top of our game all the time as far as what are the trending styles you know what are people drinking what's what's most well perceived out there with most of the help from ryan getting us started yeah we we, we really we rely uh, largely on Ryan and Joe's input as far as uh, mm -hmm. you know what the styles are what the you know they 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 do a, a great job at at keeping true true to form styles mm -hmm. and that's that's something that we're we're very proud of mm -hmm. yeah there's a lot of breweries out there right now that are that are <clears throat> you know they're doing some really really crazy stuff and Brotherton from day 1 which we really do pride ourselves on is we, we try to stay true to style. We do a lot of traditional beers, um, a lot of stuff that that just your, it, it doesn't matter if you are a beginning uh, craft beer enthusiast or a, a, a expert per se, um, we have something for everybody on, mm -hmm. our, on our beer tap list. Now, um, Ryan, see if you can remember way back when you all first started. What's the first brew beer you brewed there in the old location? Uh, probably the IPA. The IPA okay. has always been mm -hmm. the steady one. That, yeah, right. Uh, uh, That's the Brotherton yeah, IPA. Yeah, that was yeah. kind of, well, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't, I've never heard, heard you, you guys use the word Please. See this? I brought my filling in here. You guys, you see you that? You guys. You guys. You guys. You. Um, the Brother Thai PA. That's is that's probably well. I wouldn't say it's your flagship, but that's the one that initially got your name out. It's there, our correct? flagship. Yeah. 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 yeah you would say that's yep. your flagship. Oh, yeah. Safe Absolutely. to say. Yep. Yep. 
Okay, we'll have to have one of those in a little while. We'll, we'll talk about that in a second. second we, will, we, will, we will also say, as we, we, we moved into this facility here for the last two years, that number four of what you're drinking right now, mm -hmm. Vic, is our, um, that, that is a very close second. In, the Pilsner? In, in, it's very, very certainly, nice. certainly in, um, certainly in our, our, our tap room, our retail outlet. So I want you two to go back to go back to your childhood. Mm -hmm. You know, oh. you guys sitting around, sitting around. Keith you know, used to beat playing. the shit out of. Him. Did he really? Yeah. Oh, well, that happens. You know, I have four brothers, and there was a lot of shit getting beat out of people with four brothers. So with the two, with the two of you, uh, I could imagine he used to be. He's, now, who who's actually the older brother? Oh, oh I love that yeah. question. Yeah. You know? Vic, that's, Thanks that's, a lot. Well, that's you're not... both very young looking. So. <laughs> I don't know, you know, All right. Like, Nice, nice recovery. Good recovery. I am the oldest of three of us, so uh -huh. there's there's actually one in, in between us. Okay. Yeah, Chris. Yep. Okay. Yep. So yeah. I'm the oldest. Chris is the middle, and Dan is the baby. Yeah. But Chris isn't involved in the brewing no, process or no, anything like not, that. No. Chris is very much involved in um, you know anything that we any events that we have on. Uh -huh. He's very much involved in that. Mm -hmm. He's helped us yeah, a lot. He's helped us a from lot the beginning. Yep. from the beginning. Yep. Speaking he's speaking kind of behind the scenes. Speaking guy. as yeah. a middle brother, middle brothers always very helpful. <laughs> you know that. So when when you all were small, did you say, okay, let's make some wine, let's make some beer today? Is that something that was part of your playtime? You know, way back, I I can't say it was. Um, you know, not until later in my life did I really, really start to start the interest in in craft beer. And um, I'm going to say probably in my mid-20s mm -hmm. did I start brewing. I was married. I had one young child. Mm -hmm. And I was not bored, but home a lot. And I had a really good friend of mine who introduced me to home brewing. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I started home brewing, and, and I loved it. I was, it there's, there's a sense of accomplishment when you, uh, when, when you get your your product done and you spread it out and you let your friends taste it and, and mm -hmm. they really enjoy it. And uh, that was the beginning for me. Mm -hmm. But I'd say that it, it's, it's, uh, it's fair to say that we've had conversations over the years that it would be great to open up. I think kind of one of our dreams was a bar and grill, bar, yeah. you know, a bar and grill type atmosphere. And we talked about that a lot. And, um, you know, not until it, it, it came to, you know, with the Valenzano family and some conversations we had with them that it, that it started to make sense that this, you know, this, this, this brewery would be a, nice a, a great addition. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, now, Valenz you know, we mentioned Valenzano. I know that's the property where you first started at. I know that... Um, Keith, you actually work at Valenzano Winery, which is in the filming. And I, I related a story, though. One time we, were, we stopped in there, and we were talking to a gentleman behind the bar. We did the wine tasting, and he was just so helpful and fast, fantastic. Turned out that was your dad, Al. Yes. We call him Big Al. Big Al. Yeah. Big Al. Who actually took care of me that day and wound up selling us, I think, four bottles of mead in addition <laughs> to the wine. Good. He's a good uh, salesman. Was, yeah, yeah, he is. He's a good sales. He, he, he was He's good. He's a relationship guy. Yeah, and and we made the trip from there right over to here. I guess about 10 minutes or so is yeah. what it is, yeah. 10, 15 minutes or so. There's always that uh, type of connection. Now, when you're growing up, now we talked, you know, uh, all of us are, you know, we're from Italian heritage. Both of we talked about our ancestry, et cetera. Your favorite Italian dish when you were growing up, what was it? Do you want to take that? No, you go. Uh, chicken parm. And chicken parm for chicken me parm. it was classic spaghetti and meatballs oh yeah, yeah. yeah. chicken parm with uh with linguine yeah. i mean that's that's uh and it's still today my yeah. number one yeah and that does hence it, the uh well the beard contributes but <laughs> well the chicken parm is also yeah, a great and, contributor and i remember growing up what i remember is uh is my mom's macaroni and gravy mm -hmm. which is always fantastic yeah. which yeah. My wife does a very nice job of recreating that uh, now. She's, she's here uh, watching it. She does <laughs> a very nice job of recreating that. The only difference is she doesn't have the nicotine from the cigarette going into the grave <laughs> uh, like my mom used to. You know? I would mention that our mother is probably the best Italian cook 
of the, German heritage. Ah. <laughs> Well, tell us a little bit about that. That's interesting because that may factor into the beer side of it too. Yeah, no, I mean, I, you know, our our mother is, uh, you know, she, uh, my father is one hundred percent Italian, and my mother is one hundred percent German, and oh. my mother, um, you know, she liked to make sure that, uh, you know, my father was well taken care of, and and he was a big fan of Italian. <laughs> fair so um you know she she made it a point to make sure that she uh she took care of that yeah yeah wonderful wonderful that's great so um i guess we're going to get be re getting ready to take a break a little bit to hear a little bit from our sponsors and when we come back here at brotherton brewing uh we will be taking a little tour of the brew uh the brew house uh joe and uh, ryan will take us in there show us some stuff and then we'll try some of these brotherton beers that we have been alluding to so we will be right back hey everybody we are back we're here at brotherton and we're in the brew house right now uh big beautiful this is a uh, used to be old firehouse here yep. correct yep correct. uh tell us a little bit about you know we talked briefly before about how you found about how this was your final location how did you find it and tell us a little bit about the town of Akko too so after we were basically shot down in uh in Shemung, not really Shemung, but is in the pine lands i can come out and say it um we started looking for other you know other areas where we would be interested in and we looked at several different buildings um, and this one happened to pop up. Anthony Valenzano actually was the one that said, guys, I know it's an old firehouse. It may be in bad shape, but it's got great bones. I mean, it's in a great little town. It's an up and coming town. The town's coming back to life again. Let's take a look. So we looked at this place and, and Dan and I walked in here and we looked at it and we said, this is it we can really make a go of this place. Um, yeah. Old firehouse built back in the 1940s, um, and we basically gutted the whole inside, redesigned the inside, the, the floor plan of the place, and uh, it is, it's a big, beautiful building. Yeah, we had the whole group of us, you know, all the partners and, and, and our wives, actually, and, um, you know, we came out of this place and we, we all said, this is the place. Yeah. You know, this yeah. is what, we're going to do it here. Yeah, yeah. As far as the town goes, Waterford Township, ACO, they have been 100% on board with us. Um, they have supported us from day one, basically bent over backwards saying, whatever you guys need, we are behind you 100%, which, which means a lot to us. So we're the, uh, we're, we're the, we're the foothold in, in the township right now. We're, we're the anchor. We are uh, we're 100% um, committed to building ACO back up to a family, nice little town where you could walk around and, and do you know, bring your family, come down, enjoy the ice cream shop, enjoy the brewery. It's it's a great little town. It is a nice little downtown area. It is. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. yeah it's really nice. And and really, not only this location, not only the firehouse itself. You've got a beautiful backyard area too. Yeah. It's summertime, especially. Yeah. 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 We uh, we really wanted to, especially since COVID. I mean, obviously, I think everybody knows we basically opened up. Uh, this location in the worst possible time in any of our lives. Um, but with the support of the township and our customers and the town people, we uh, and our we're, employees. Yep, our employees. We're uh, we're we're doing we're we're good. Yeah, we're good. We're happy. Yeah, yeah. beautiful beautiful location here. Beautiful Thanks. location. So we're gonna pivot a little bit. We're gonna talk about the brew house because you know any of you watching, you know I'm. A little bit of a brew geek, so I'm going to turn to the brew team here, Ryan and Joe. Tell us about the equipment here. Uh, it's a Prospero, uh, Prospero brew house, 15 barrels. Uh, it's the same equipment we had over in the old location in that little barn, which is probably not even a quarter of the size of this space. 
Uh, everything was pretty much jammed in there except for we did buy one new 30 barrel fermenter uh, once we moved over here. Uh, it's worked out really well for us. I've worked in breweries that have very fancy equipment where you're sitting at a computer. I've had breweries that have no kind of uh, computer screen or anything here. It's very nice. We have just enough to let you know what, what everything that's going on without uh, but you're still very hands-on, so uh, very nice brewery for us. It's worked uh, out well so far. I think 15 barrels is a sweet spot for us right now. Okay. And we'll probably stick with it. For, yeah. You know. yeah. Now, uh, tell me a little bit about the sourcing, uh, like grain, etc. Where Where do you get all that from? Uh, we have several different uh, suppliers. Uh, most of our beers, if you're going to look at them, they probably have... European grain, they probably have English grain, they probably have American grain, so it's not like we're sticking to just, you know, one or the other. Uh, it's kind of whatever we, we like. Uh, even the European grains are getting a little more expensive now, but uh, it's a big part of, I think, a lot of our core beers, so, you know, we stick with the good floor malted English barley. Um, some of it's American, a lot of it's from Germany. We use a, uh, a Czech Pilsner grain, a Bohemian Pilsner. Um, and the Pilsner I had before, Pilsner is excellent. Thank you. Nice and crisp and clear, you know, which is what you want from a Pilsner. Now, as far as this location, you know, I'll address this to the whole, you know, the whole brewery team here. You've got a lot of room for expansion this far. Is that something that might be on the horizon for you? Absolutely. You know, yeah. Absolutely. You know, that was our plan going into, uh, into this building. Um, that played a big part in us making the decision to, to come here and to, and to build this place out. Um, we, we want room to grow. Unlike our, our, you know, our previous spot, we had zero room to grow. We, we completely grew out of that spot. And here we have, we have plenty of room for expansion, which we are really, really hoping that uh, that we can we, we can fill this fill this spot with tanks and and everything we need to to service our customers. Excellent, great. Now we have some beers here we're going to try, but first I want to ask the brewers here: What's your favorite beer that you ever favorite Brotherton beer that you ever brewed? Your first. Uh, I, I gave you guys some advance notice here, <laughs> so you got yeah. time to think. Uh, I'm going to stick with the Oktoberfest. That was okay. my first brew day here, mm -hmm. um, and I've you know, really become a big lager guy in the past like year or two. Mm -hmm. So a little background on Joe. Why don't you give a little background on yourself real quick, Joe? All right. Uh, yeah, I, before starting here, like I said, about a little over a year ago, I worked at River Horse for three years. Which was a big production brewery. Yeah, so it started packaging line there, worked up into the cellar, and then finally brewing. Mm -hmm. um, and then prior to that, I worked at a smaller uh, smaller brewery in Northeast PA, which mm -hmm. where I'm from originally, uh, mm -hmm. called Ironheart. Uh, now, River Horse, so one thing, River, River Horse, and they're a whole brew house and barrel area. There's a lot of funky paintings on the wall yeah, and stuff yeah. in there, so... so uh, Tell me about that. Is that something that you that you guys can, you know, the, your tap room design is absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. Is there, you know, any plans that you have uh, otherwise for inside here? I know, I know you probably do. So we do, and it's uh, it's it's in the works. I'd, I'd rather not give up too much on that right now, but it is going to be much more interesting in the brew house um, in in months to come. Because I know in bu busier times, you probably you set up tables in here, too, yeah, yeah, in busier yeah, times yeah, yeah, that yeah, you have. Yeah, for sure. So, for sure. Excellent. So excellent. get back to the beers again. Go yeah, ahead, let's get back to so the beers. Yours is, uh, yours is Oktoberfest. Yeah. Go ahead, Ryan. Ryan, what about Ryan. you? Um, it'd have to be probably one of our saisons. Okay. Uh, right now, we have a saison one that was for the barrels of right over there. Uh, it's in whiskey, wine barrels. Uh, for almost a year, I think they they spent in there. Okay. Um, but I've always been into that, putting something into a, into a barrel, and you know something really interesting comes out. And as <laughs> a I have to forget about it almost. As a great <laughs> segue, we actually have the barrel age saison here. Cool. All right. Now, which one is that here that we have? 
It's actually uh, our third This one, one here? Yep. Yeah, looks yep. like okay, we're now, not going to go in order for these beers. Nope, so. nope. So we're going to try the barrel age saison. Okay. Now, Brian, as we're doing this, you want to give a little background information on yourself? Uh, sure. I've been brewing <clears throat> since 2004, so I'm going on almost uh, 20 years. Uh, yeah, I've worked cool. in little breweries. I've worked in big breweries. Uh, but I've always liked the smaller scale breweries making saisons, uh, making real kind of rustic style ales. So this fits right into that. Uh, I can remember making probably my first saison professionally back in about 2006 or 2007. And uh, not a whole lot of people were doing it back then. Uh, so it was kind of a new thing, but it's something that I've always just loved to do. And uh, hopefully I've gotten decent at it. And this is delicious. Tell, tell us about the barrel that this was in. Uh, so this is all a blend of six different barrels. Mm -hmm. uh, oh. It was two bourbon barrels, uh, two from the winery that they used for apple wine. Okay. And two from the winery that they used for red wine. Hmm. Uh, they had three different fruits. It was pomegranate, uh, plums, and black currants. And it all got blended together just because it tasted did that, that is way. Phenomenal. <laughs> and it was my favorite beer. Mm. Yep. Uh, how long did uh, did the beer stay in the barrel? It was almost a year. Mm -hmm. uh, fermented with uh, wild yeast and uh, you pitch bacteria in it. Okay. For some. Very very nice. Delicious beer. This might be my favorite that I've had so far <laughs> since I've been here. So I haven't had many, but. Uh, but it's very good. I haven't designated driver tonight, so it's okay. <laughs> That's good. But they're really nice. Now, what does this come in at, ABV-wise? Uh, I think it's eight. Eight? Yeah. It's yeah, eight point two. This one, I think, right? Mm -hmm. I could taste the fruit. It's really, really nice. Very nice color. Gorgeous, gorgeous color. Yeah. Now, you, you blended it in six different barrels and moved in. Is that, is that what you did? How did you do that? Tell me about uh, it. We use our bright tank for a okay. lot of the barrel program uh -huh. just because we are using our... Uh, fermenters as unit tanks. Right, right. Um, so we really don't use the bright tank for much else. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll just transfer the barrels into the bright tank. Okay. Carbonated in there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I see you got no, uh, looks like the barrels are nice and sturdy and, and leak proof there. I don't see anything underneath it, so that's good. Yeah, uh, we try to use them as soon as we, we get them so, and mm -hmm. so they swell nicely and we've never really had a problem with them tripping too much. Really nice, delicious, delicious beer. Johnny, you'd probably like this one. This is a really nice one. Mm. Very nice. So tell us about the rest of our beers that we have here now. now so starting from left to our left to, to right, um, we have our Brotherton IPA, which was our flagship IPA. All right. Um, that is basically what we started with. That is basically what uh, our number one seller. Now, now this Ryan, this is uh, you would consider this like a West Coast style. No, this is a an East Coast style. Okay. Uh, not as hazy as a lot of the right. newer hazy mm -hmm. stuff that comes out, um, but it is brewed with oats. Uh, okay. And it is cloudier when it is fresh. Uh, it's, this one's got a little bit of age on it, but it does, like, this beer changes so much, mm -hmm. and it just goes from this kind of real fresh tasting hops to, I think at this point, it gets, just turns more juicy. Yeah, it's juicy, um, so it's very it's, mellow, very it's mellow It's very taste. mellow. It's not a real bitter mm -hmm. IPA. It's a, it's a very approachable IPA. Yeah, that's not, now, this is the first beer that you made at the, at the original location. It's, it's hard to remember at this point. <laughs> I think we were, it probably at was. At the old location, we were mo making mostly, because we were just distributing. Right, We right. were making mostly IPA and Jersey Devil. Yeah, yeah. Different stuff thrown in every once in a while. That's, but what, that's what was selling back then. Yep. Yeah, yeah. You know, we're to, you know let, me, let me ask all of you, you brew industry guys, what do you think of the change in the trends on the beers? You know, I know everything was, you know, there was a lot of breweries, like 70% of what they had was IPAs. Mm -hmm as recent as like maybe two years ago. Now it's kind of changed a little bit. It so is. so my real quick synopsis on that is I, I honestly think IPAs are here to stay. Um, personally, I think the 
heavily lactose IPAs, the milkshake, so-called milkshake IPAs, are a trend. Um, they're awesome. We make a couple of them, but I, I honestly believe, in the end, as years go by, um, the craft beer industry is going to go back to the traditional styles. I, I can't say that 100% wholeheartedly. I believe that's going to happen. I hope that's going to happen because mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm a fan. Well, and it's a thing, you know, um, Ryan even talked about the type of malts that you use are a lot of European, yep. which goes right along with all the traditional, a yes. lot of traditional. Absolutely. Uh, you probably use a lot of tr traditional hops, et cetera, here also. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I have friends that will bring up some new hop they used and it's like, I <laughs> never heard <laughs> of it. Yeah. Yeah. But they are, I mean, it's exciting experimenting with the newer hops varieties right. that are coming out, but uh, I have my favorites, you know, yeah. that I've been using for a long time. So, of course. Yeah. So the second one we're going to try is called Out of Your Skull. Um, it is a non-traditional, um, heavily fruited sour. Um, you can go over the uh, berries and, and what else, the adjuncts we put in this, Ryan. Um, I'm trying to remember the berries exactly. I think it was raspberry. blackberry and raspberry. And lemon. Mm -hmm. as well. Oh, that's right. Oh, there's lemon, yep. yeah. It was blackberry and lemon. Uh, it's really nice. This was a little different. We make a bunch of different uh, goses, more traditional German type sours during the, over the course of the year. Uh, this is the first time we've used lactose in one to kind of offset that mm. sourness. It okay. is a kettle sour, uh, so it is. It spends 48 hours in the kettle with bacteria souring. Um, but the lactose, that's where we get some of the sweetness out of it. Then. So it is sweeter than yeah. yeah it, uh, it would be. Uh, if it were just, well, I guess without the lactose. <laughs> it's like a classic beer show. We're yes. talking about yep. lactose, et cetera, yep. and so forth. Yep. I'm getting a signal here. Yep. We may go a little bit over. That's okay, John. Okay, really nice. I love that. And tell us about the last one we have here in front of us. So that is the uh, our Rasmanian Devil. That's a Goza. Ooh. And, uh, yeah, I'll let uh, Joe explain that one. Uh, so, like the... Uh, like the out of your skull, it's a kettle sour as well. Mm -hmm. um, but instead of all the other fruits, and mm -hmm. I think we forgot to mention in out of your skull, there's uh, graham crackers that went into the uh, oh, okay, graham crackers. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, graham crackers uh, in there. Yeah. This has just uh, just raspberry and like a traditional goza, some nice. uh, some salt to it. Very nice. Oh, what kind of raspberry did you put in it? Um, the puree you use? It's a puree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Puree, yeah. Really nice, very nice. Are we only it's light. Yeah, it's nice and light. Right. Uh, yeah, it's really yeah. delicious. Four percent. Nice color. Easy drinking. Mm -hmm. Long mower, like long mower beer. Mm -hmm. You think Kathy might like that? I don't know. She don't like my. She don't like my beer. <laughs> <laughs> the beer that she, she likes. Yeah. She likes to smell the beers. I believe, but she doesn't uh, necessarily yeah. want to drink them. Now this is nice. Very wine like. Yeah. Very wine like qualities yeah. that you get into it. Yeah. You know, really nice. Okay, we are to a large array of. This is just a small mm -hmm. sampling of right. what we do. So you have like 14, 15 on tap usually. We have fifteen. 15. Yes, 15? yeah, fifteen beers yeah. on tap. Really, really quick before I get all the information from Desert Island Beer, Dan. Uh, Jersey Devil Double IPA. Okay. I'm going to have to go with our Swarthy Invader, which is our barrel-aged um, stout. Nice, nice, very nice. Ryan, uh, one beer. The Saison. The Saison, good. Joe? Pilsner. The Pilsner, that's yeah. good. That's good. You could pick other beers outside of Brotherton, too. Nah, that'd look bad. That's good, that's good. That sounds good. I love it. I love it. Okay, um, Brother, Brotherton Brewing Company, where can people find you? Where can they find out about events you might have, and et cetera? Yeah, I'll let you take that. Where can they find us? Well, www.brothertonbrewing.com. Uh, um, plenty of bars, restaurants, of bars, restaurants. On our website, we and our uh, our Facebook page, we have listings of uh, you know where we're at in in bars and and, and liquor stores. Yeah. 
Okay. Well, guys, thank you for. And obviously, our tasting room. Come out and visit us. Okay. Beautiful You're, place, beautiful uh, thank place. You. And thank you. is there a time of year that you actually close the outside out back? Because it's really a beautiful area. There. We don't Not open really. all year round. Okay. We, uh, we we try our best to put some. We have some outside patio heaters that uh -huh. we put out there in in the cold months because people like to be outside, and uh, we we we're 100% on board with that. Okay. And our our. Uh, Operating days are um, Monday, or I'm uh, sorry, Thursday, Thursday through Friday, Sunday. Saturday. Yeah. Sunday, yeah. So Thursday through the weekend, then Thursday, Thursday Friday, Saturday, Saturday, Sunday. Yep. Yeah. yeah. All right, we are going to wrap up here. Dan, Keith, thanks for having us. Vic, Brian, John, Joe, thank thanks you. for sitting in here. Uh, we appreciate it. Always love coming out. And like I said, this is the first time we're out here. It won't definitely be the last That's time. Awesome. Awesome. We appreciate and it. And me, I'm Vic, Vic's Basement Brew. Make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube, YouTube channel, the South Jersey Beer Scene. Uh, and check out our Facebook page uh, for South Jersey Beer Scene, Vic's Basement Brew. You can check that out, find out with, uh, what I'm up to with my home brewing and other escapades. And also, please check out Brewery Strong which is, uh, you know, our nonprofit uh, and that uh, works to help folks in the industry, in the uh, brewing and, uh, and other uh, service and uh, restaurant industry. So with sure. that, thank, you, thank you all for watching. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you it. Much. Johnny, as always, Thanks, thank John. you. And we will see you all next time. Cheers. We are out. <laughs>